Welcome to this first video on bipedalism. Now, bipedalism just means moving on two legs. Also, you might have seen the word biped in the last video, which just means standing on two legs. So we learned in the last video that as the environment changed, our biology needed to change with it, and our culture evolved as well. This is the evolution of humans that's important for this topic. So in this video, we're going to focus on mainly biological changes of actually changing from four legs as a quadruped to two legs, a biped. So we're going to talk about the advantages of bipedalism and talk about three different changes that actually occurred. So the first of those is the benefits. So why was it difficult to be a quadruped in a savanna environment? Why did we need to change? Well, the first thing is that there was a lot more sun. You didn't have the trees shading you anymore. So your back was exposed to the sun and it was easy to overheat. Whereas on two legs, you only had the top of your head exposed to the sun. So you have better thermoregulation. Now, thermoregulation is a key word, which just means regulating your temperature. The next thing was that you can't see very far if you're on the grassland and you're very short. So when you're standing up and you're taller, you can see predators more easily. And when predators look at you, if you're down on four legs, you look smaller. Whereas if you're up on two legs, you look more menacing. You look a bit taller, bigger, and a bit more scary to attack. Next is that with four limbs, you don't have your arms free. So you can't carry your infants, your food. You can't use tools. It's a little bit harder to get by. Whereas when you have two limbs free, you can actually carry food, infants, and do things. Finally, you have less efficient locomotion, which just means less efficient movement if you're down on four legs. Whereas up on two legs, it's much more efficient for movement over long distances. And when you're in a grassland, you need to move a lot further than you do when you're swinging in trees. So these are the benefits of bipedalism in the savanna environment. So let's now go into the three major changes you're going to need to learn for this video. So the first of those are the physical differences in anatomy, particularly in the skeleton. So over on the left-hand side here, we have a skeleton of one of the great apes that humans evolved from, a quadruped. So the first thing you'll notice is it's bent over, so the spine is in a C shape, kind of curved around like a C. Whereas when you stand up straight, you need an S-shaped spine, a curved spine in a different way so that you can support vertical weight. That's the first difference. The second difference is that arms were longer because they had to support weight. They were also stronger. Whereas now, arms are shorter and they don't support the weight, so they're a bit weaker than they were. The next change was that great apes had opposable big toes, so they could actually grip branches with their feet. Whereas now, we have short straight toes, and it's no longer optimized for swinging with our feet in trees. Instead, we can stride forward a lot more easily with big toes pointing straight. Finally, there's flat feet. So back when we were great apes, we needed to swing trees, so there's no arches. So it's really inefficient to walk on the ground. You weren't designed for it. Whereas now we have arched feet, so it's much more efficient when you're walking or running around. So these are the four major changes to our skeleton. Now we'll look a little bit more at the skull in the next video, but now because our hands are so important for doing things as bipeds, let's look a little bit more about the hands. So back when we were quadrupeds, it was all about being able to grip branches. So quadrupeds had curved fingers for swinging. Now this is also called brachiating. And we had a power grip. So that means the fingers and the thumb all wrap around the same side of the branch, as opposed to now when we'd grip on different sides of the branches with our fingers versus our thumb. And it was really powerful, but had less fine motor skills. So they weren't as good at doing small detailed things with their hands. Whereas now with our hands free, we had straighter fingers, and that allowed for a much more precision grip. So the thumb now comes around the front, and it's a lot longer. It comes right up almost to our first knuckle. And that meant that we can do a lot more. We can use tools, acquire food, and that's partly due to our opposable thumb and our flexible fingers. Versus the curved fingers, you'll be able to see you even walk on the outside of your knuckles. That's how curved the hands were. So finally, we want to look at changes in the brain. So over time, our diet improved from one and a half million years ago to now. We were eating fruit, veggies, and plants, and now we're eating much fattier foods. And actually, that led to big brain size increases. So this effect actually created what's called a positive feedback loop. So you start off with something like eating a better diet that leads to something else like a bigger brain. But then in turn, the bigger brain means we're smarter, so we can have a better diet again, which helps improve our brain again, and the cycle continues around and around. So this is called a positive feedback loop. So in bipedalism, this is one example. So you could write down, you have a bigger brain, you get to use your hands a lot better because you're standing up, 
and then you can collect better food. In turn leads to a bigger brain because food feeds the brain. Then you have better motor skills again and the cycle carries on. Now this isn't the only positive feedback loop that you need for bipedalism. There's other things like not having hair. Now if you don't need hair because of the environment or other reasons, you can't carry your babies anymore. They can't hold on to your hair. So you have to hold them in your arms. And holding them in your arms means you've got to keep standing up because you need your arms free. Standing up gives you better thermoregulation, you can control the temperature, which means you don't need hair, which makes it harder for babies to hold on, more of a reason to stand up, and so on and so on. So these are positive feedback loops which cycle around and around each other and reinforce the same behaviors and changes in our bodies. So to summarize now for what you need to know, at first we looked at quadrupeds versus bipeds. Now this is the benefits of surviving in a new environment and then we looked at some of the physical changes. So to go through those major benefits, you look larger to predators as a biped, you can see further because you're standing up, you're taller, you're better at controlling your temperature because you have only the top of your head in the sun versus the whole of your back. Then you can also carry food, infants, tools, you can defend yourself because your hands are actually free. And just simply standing on two legs is a much more efficient way to get around called locomotion. So the physical changes we discussed with it, we now had an S-shaped spine rather than a C-shaped spine. We no longer need to support our weight with our arms, so we have shorter arms that are a little bit weaker. Third, we had arched feet. So this is much more efficient for locomotion, for moving around. We have the short straight toes. Again, this helps us move around a lot more efficiently on the ground in the savanna environment than trying to walk on feet, which were made for swinging in branches. And finally, there's curved fingers that we used to have for power grip evolved to become straight fingers with fine motor skills as bipeds, so we could do a lot more with our hands. Now, the next thing we learned was about positive feedback loops. Now, the first thing was about the brain and that a better diet led to a better brain, which led to better motor skills, in turn, led to a better diet, better food, and a bigger brain, and the cycle carried on. Then we looked at another example of when you have less hair, you need to stand up and hold your infants because they can't hold on to the hair anymore. Standing up means you lose more hair again, which means there's more of a need to carry your infants. So if we look at an example question which applies all of this knowledge, here we've got one that says, long before the hominin fossils were found. Now remember, hominin just means any kind of human after we were separate from apes. So it had been predicted that walking upright must have happened before other biological changes, such as the manipulative abilities of the hand. So there's not general agreement on what caused bipedalism to develop in early hominins, but one theory is that the environmental change from forest to savanna played that critical role. So we need to discuss how bipedalism may have developed and resulted in further biological evolution in early hominins. So anyway, in our answer, what we actually need to do is describe the changes in the skeleton, the hand, and the brain due to bipedalism. Then we need to explain why bipedalism was selected for in the environment of early hominins, that's the savanna environment. Then finally, we're going to need to justify why the brain developments and manipulative hand abilities would have occurred after bipedalism. So let's just go through these things one by one. So we'll start with the first point of describing changes in the skeleton, hand, and brain. And first of all, we're just going to look at those changes in skeleton. So you remember we looked at four different changes in skeleton, the S-shaped spine, the fact that the weight isn't supported by arms anymore, the fact that we now have arched feet and short straight toes. So we can just write all of this down in a sentence and that would be enough for our answer. So bipedalism meant that spines became S-shaped, weight was no longer supported by the hands or arms, arms were now free, toes were straighter and shorter to allow for more efficient bipedalism. So we're just writing down the changes that we learnt to the skeleton. Next let's focus on the hand. Now the hand changes we learned was that we have opposable first toes back in our feet when they used to grip branches, whereas now they're short straight toes, and curved fingers for power grip versus straight fingers for fine motor skills. So we can just write this down. Quadrupeds have curved fingers for swimming in trees. Now swinging in trees is also called brachiation. Their fingers and their thumb wrap around an object on the same side in a power grip, whereas Bipedalism meant that hands became free from swinging so you could use them for other things, so the grip then changed from power to precision. And this allowed bipeds to have improved motor skills of their hands, they could do a lot more with their hands. So this is the second part. Finally, let's look at the brain part of this question. So in this question, remember we learned that a bigger brain came from an improved diet. And when we want to write that down, we can say bipedalism meant that the hands were free to collect more food. Better food caused brain growth. A bigger brain 
means better tool making skills and learning capacity. And in a later part of this question, we're going to talk about the positive feedback loop effect. Next, we need to talk about why bipedalism was selected for in this environment. So what are the benefits? Now remember, when we went from a forest environment to the grassland environment, the climate became warmer and drier. So we need to mention this at the start of our answer. But the benefits we looked at were the fact that we look larger, we can see further, we only have our top of the head in the sun, we can carry food infant tools and defend ourselves with our hand, and we have really efficient walking and locomotion on two legs. So if we write all of this down saying that when the environment changed, we needed to look bigger, see further, see the top of our head in our sun, which means thermoregulation, controlling our temperature, use our hands and be more efficient at walking long distances. So again, you're just describing the benefits of walking on two legs that we covered in the video. Finally, we need to justify with reasons why brain development and manipulative ability of the hand would have occurred after bipedalism. Now this is because bipedalism started those positive feedback loops. So when you stand up, you're going to create a change which creates another change and that all reinforces itself. So for example, standing up leads to better motor skills of the hand, which means then you can collect better food, which means you get a bigger brain and the cycle continues because you become better and better at all of these things. So you can actually write that down. You can say brain development and manipulative ability of the hand would have occurred after bipedalism because walking on two legs frees up the hands to create a positive feedback loop that led to those developments. You also want to say what that is. So you want to say that standing leads to better motor skills of the hand, which allowed us to collect better food, which allowed our brains to grow and in turn led to better motor skills. And this goes on and on and on. Now I'd recommend drawing a diagram like this. Now you don't have to draw pictures, but at least write the words and show the arrows going round and round in a circle. So what you'll see now is that after writing all of this down, we've just taken the key points from this video and turned it into a big excellence level answer by being really methodical at reading these points in the question and answering them one by one by one. And that is the first part of bipedalism.